Today I'm going to do the flagship from the Rotel range, back from 1981, which is the Rotel RVC240. It's a bit dusty, it says it's arrived. Um, let's see what it says on that. It's had a few resprays, I think, over its uh, time. In fact, it's had a bit of overspray, hasn't it, on the back there? Oh, we can still read the serial number. Now, our sticker there, number in red, means that one of the other people who does engineering work here has tested it and found it not to work at all. So it's going to be a repair job as well. I bought this off eBay and next time I go over to our stock control computer I'll tell you what I paid for it. Now one of the subscribers on here has asked if I can say how the dimmer switch is wired. That's because he's bought one where that's been messed around with. Oh yes, there it is, yes. Right, so we'll show the wiring on that because it's not quite clear from the service manual. So I'm going to open this up and we'll see why. It'll be Mark who will have labelled this, why Mark thinks it doesn't work at all. Unfortunately, when I open it up, I find it's had some illegal modification done. Whether or not this just is supposed to put it to an 80 channel set from a 40, I've got no idea. It will be coming out. Um, you can't put 80 channels on a 40 channel UK set because on the legal grounds it's not going to work properly anyway. So he's got this other sub board. Is that probably to try and trim the bodge on frequency? I really don't know. So what we're going to have to do is to get all that out put a brand new synthesizer chip in which is an LC7137 and see whether we can restore this to uh, to proper working order. To be honest, the uh, radio communications agency or the DTI or off whatever it is this week, I don't know, they keep changing the name, don't they? They say I'm supposed to destroy sets like this, but I'm going to give it a go. It's ours anyway, so it won't be going out of circulation. So, I will just pause the video, I'll stop the video and do a lot of work. So what we're going to be looking at now, I've got rid of all the naughty add-ons, is the VCO. Now this radio has burst into transmit as soon as I've uh, rectified what had been uh, altered. So what we've done is to change, I'll just zoom in on this so you can see, fitted a new synthesizer IC which is the LC7137, you can just see under that subboard. I also discovered this capacitor was missing, which is capacitor 123 and is 47 picofarad. And I also discovered that capacitor 124 was missing just there, which is 18 picofarad. I've got those new in stock. It just makes them so expensive to service when this has happened because that synthesizer chip, I think it's £12.50 to us, and uh, you know, you can just do without it. And at the end of the day, this is a brush painted, not good condition set, and you know, this servicing cost is going to be on what it's worth. Now, do you know, just, just sidetracking, I've got a um, Bantone 5 star here. Let's just zoom out on that. This is how we've bought it, no doubt from a radio rally for a couple of quid. And this is another set that's been messed about with. And I've got here a York 863, another one which we'll have paid a couple of quid for. And this has got the... This has also been messed about with. And I've got here... The remains of a York 861. And look, it's got somebody's done the, the bodgy piggyback chip in that. And I just don't get it. These are high end sets which work very well. And they just seem to get messed about with. Right, back to the job in question. So the first thing we need to do is you select channel 40 on these sets to do the VCO. 
So we will select channel 40. And we need to put our test prod. Oops, losing all my things. I've got the negative connected to this um, earth link across these two screening cans. Bearing in mind the chassis is a floating chassis. And what we need to do is to put the test prod just there. That is test point one, and that is resistor four. So I'll just zoom in on that so you can just see where we are. So we've got the resistor four there, and we've got that far end of it is the test point. Now if we zoom out so you can see the meter as well, What we're looking for on channel 40 is 4 volts plus or minus 0.1. Now, as you can see, we're showing 2.96. So, adjusting transformer 1, which is the VCO coil there, I'm going to bring this up to 3.9. That's been, in my experience, of course I'm using a metal tool, which I shouldn't be, 3.94, that'll do nicely. Going into transmit, we then adjust CT1, which is the one just where my yellow clip is, is the trimmer capacitor. We're going to go into transmit, and again we're looking for about 4 volts. That's a little bit low. Two point nine seven six. That'll do nicely. Now selecting channel 1. And what we now need is to make sure we've got somewhere around 1.8 to 2.5 volts. And we have. So that's in lock. And on transmit, you're going to transmit now, we're supposed to have somewhere between 1.9 and 2.5 volts. That's a little tiny bit low. So I'm just going to redo that. So using CT... there so we've now got 1.95 see what it's now like on receive on channel just go back to channel 40 so 3.97 on receive 3.18 is a bit low on transmit so it's the old compromise, isn't it? So we'll just up that a little bit. I think that's the best compromise. So just to recap, we start on channel 1 with the test point 1. And we're hoping to see about 4 volts on the meter. Going into transmit. And then we're hoping to see round about 4 volts and adjusting it with CT1. Then moving to channel 1, we're checking that we are on 1.8 to 2.5 volts on transmit. And on receive, we're checking between 1.9 and 2.5. And now we're in lock. This is just slightly outside those voltages, but it is in lock. And that's what it's all about. So that's covered the VCO. Now then, we're going to move on to setting up the transmitter. We're going to adjust 2, 3 and 4. And just to verify which 2, 3 and 4 are. So I'll zoom in so we can see. We don't need to see the meter anymore. So 
So we're looking at 2, 3, and 4. So this is the driver. It's 2, 3, and 4. We're on channel 20, of course, in the centre of the band. Going into transmit. 2, 3, and 4. So we've set those. Just over the 3 watts at that point. And what we're now going to do is we're going to adjust L4, L8 and L9. So looking at the layout, although these are very popular sets, we see very few Cybernet 134 chassis radios in for service. So they are either very, very reliable, everybody smashed them up one or the other. L4, 8 or 9. Oh yes. Four, eight, nine. So using the green, we've got a green plastic tool for these. Going back into transmit. That's four watts. That's four watts. That's about four point one, four point two. To set the power exactly, the service manager says rotate L9 coil counterclockwise to obtain 3.8 watts. Well, I just said we've peaked this at 4.2. So I'll just back it off a fraction to 4 exactly. So now moving over to the high low power switch. And on the front panel, I've got the front panel off this set at the moment. It's going to end up going through the, the company dishwasher. So it's the second switch along. Um, it's reading 0. Point what? It's not reading 0. Point 0.1 at the moment. And it's the preset number RV5. Often we have to clean those, but it, that one's not dirty, so I usually use the service cell on them. But that one's not dirty, so we're all right. So we've set that for 0.4 of a watt in the low power position. So we'll go back to the full power, the 4 watt range. We're going to check the radios on frequency. I could have done this right at the beginning, of course. And it's 27.779125. And that's what we've got. I did set that up previously. And of course, it's the trimmer next to the crystal there. I'll just zoom in on that so you can see it. There's the red trimmer just there to set the frequency. So we've already had to do that to uh, restore the thing back to working order. You know, this has got a red sticker on it because Mark had previously said it doesn't work. It's interesting to note that it's the 80 channel bodge that has actually failed because the set's working perfectly. Now we've actually replaced the synthesizer chip with the correct one. So we'll move on to the uh, deviation now. So we have RV2 and RV6, and I see this as deviation and might gain, that's how I see it. So using the 
audio oscillator we hold up to the mic. It's actually well above. It's doing three and a half. So we'll just that back that off to two point two and then do the whistle test to just make sure that we're not exceeding two point five. <sighs> Wallo. <sighs> and that's spot on. I'll just listen to it on the little monitor to see what we have. Testing one, two, three, one, two. That was absolutely fine. So that was a bit high. So we'll now move on to the RF power meter adjustment, which is RV4. And RV4 is the preset just there. So deviation to the left, mic gain, and the meter. So because the meter lamp's gone in this as well, so I'll put my test my thing in there. Going to transmit. It swung right across, and we'll now set that for four. So that's set. And that's it. I can't think of anything else that we've uh, we've missed. I will just pop this on our spectrum analyzer. I don't have video on that uh, bench. We've got a dead basic spectrum analyzer. Having this having been messed about with, I just need to make sure that the harmonics aren't outside of the specification. I'll just have to look up the specification uh, of MPT thirteen twenty to do that as well. So when this is had such a, a lot to messed about with. It is just best to check uh, when you've got those facilities. So there you are, that covers the Roto RVC240 and that is the VFO, VCO and the transmit setup.